available through that route. So, you know, I can't carry 30 years worth of history around in my brain when I've not been around for 10, you know, any more than 10 months. But what I did do before I came out um, was I checked the last couple of years of complaint history and incidents of flaring that have been reported to us. So, you might like to reflect on this as a community because you want your voices heard. And, and I, I've said already tonight, I think that's important, and I commit to carrying on the conversation. Um, but in terms of complaints, in 2015, we only got nine complaints from public, members of the public through our complaint solution hotline uh, in relation to Exxon Mobile. Okay, so we have a number on our website, 0800 80 70 60. If there's an instance of pollution that's occurring at uh, either of the sites, you need to tell us. Because, you know, that is what triggers a response from the regulator and is the evidence for what we do. So, so I, I'll follow it up because... Just to say, in relation to the most recent incidents, we're still looking at the figures, the numbers of complaints that we received. And in relation to that um, incident that occurred starting on the 12th, we had about 30 people complaining to us. And in relation to the black hole of smoke that occurred on Sunday the 18th, about 50 complaints. So I'm just telling you in terms of you know, the kind of interaction that we're getting through our pollution in, uh, uh, hotline. And I would encourage you to use it because that's, that's you know, information that triggers us to go out. Of course, there's two reasons why a hotline makes two calls. One is there are a few incidents, and the other one is that people don't have confidence in it. So, yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> My name is Kevin Jones, uh, I'm an old member of the community. Um, earlier on, uh, Mr. Morris there gave us an answer about how long is it is a spring. Well, this flare in this time is not any different to flare in all the time, all over the years. So why should it take you so long to go through and find out why the flare from? I could tell you a lot about it. I've been working there for 15 years. And I found out this time there was a pump, a big pump that so instead of the system moving over to the, the backup pump, I couldn't do that because the backup pump had already shot up uh, about six months prior and I hadn't bothered to fix it because it cost money. Right? Now they have to flare them. They can't tell you uh, today or we're going to flare them or because they don't know when they're going to be flared. And it depends on the feed that comes down from the North Sea. If it's, if it's heavy, then there's going to be a hell of a, a, a blast going on uh, And as far as SEPA goes, like I said, I was in there for 15 years or more. Uh, the representatives in there I hardly ever see. Uh, they're definitely in the pockets of the uh, Exxon mm -hmm. Because oh, what I've seen, no, 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 what I've seen in there myself in my own eyes, I was a supervisor in one department. So I didn't have an idea of what was going on, especially in 15 years. It's picked something up, right? And uh, as far as actual mobile concerned, and it's pointless, it's been here, right? We've been dangling here, we've seen far, and everybody else. Because this would waste our time again and again and go on, and I'm saying, oh, we'll look into that, we'll get fined this, we'll get fined that. But the point is, a multinational company like actual mobile, which is the biggest in the world, you could find them a billion, it won't, it's not even a dent to them, it's nothing. So these fines and things are talking about, you don't care, they laugh at you. Right? And they'll say it, they'll say it with a little boy, the contract doesn't matter, you're off any money. That's a fact. So, you make it really, I mean, all that we want to be able to do is carry out a full and thorough investigation, and all that I was alluding to, and I apologise if I've created the wrong impression. He's saying uh, using the phrase that I think. I just don't know how long it's going to take, but we commit to a full and thorough every time. And there's the same reason every time something so, some part of the plant breaks down, yeah. then they have to shut it off. Yeah. And the feed is not going to be it, but it can't con you know, control the feed, so it has to be turned off. And that's the reason. Yeah. And every time it happens, it's because it'll break down the plant. <laughs> the plant is in a bad way. Very bad way. Uh, to ease it when the question speaks yourself in the council. This is just one incident of flaring. Now you 
said that they're entitled to play the law, but they are not entitled to make us ill. Every time they play it, people in the community become ill. They are not entitled to do that. And something needs to be done about it, whether it is the council, whether it's yourself. <coughs> and see this taking one incident, I don't care whether they get fined or no. I want them to somewhere stop doing what they're doing, stop affecting our kids, our sleep. <laughs>
it could also monitor sound, it could also do a number of other stuff, <coughs> with electronics and with computer systems are all linked in. You don't need people running around at 3 o'clock in the morning. You don't have to have this. It's already there. The systems are there. All you've got to use, do is use it. I'm a technophobe and I freely admit this. You know, I suffer with dyslexia and I can even understand this. You know, it doesn't need to be rocket science, as the, the common term says. The technology is there. Why is it being used? There are, there's a very fair quality which has certainly got, was set up by the Parliamentarian Committee, not by the committee itself obviously, but through the committee. It reported back to the committee two or three times for two or three years since then, or after that I'm afraid I've not heard anything from it. If there is a report due to the committee, it should be round about now. So yes, there is action being taken by Fife Council through Crown Area Committee to look at the monitoring. We can have another look at it and see if, like you said, we can get a noise monitoring going as well as the pollution. I think it's wrong to say that the present structures don't do it. Uh, so, simply to repeat that the present structures will be in place, I suspect will not necessarily answer the concerns that people have. Uh, and there was, there was a lack of trust. There's a lack of trust in the procedures, uh, and I, I, I suggest that's something they want to think about. Yes. I was going to MSP. Can I say, Chairman, I'd like to see so many people here tonight, but I am appalled that you do not have representation from the company here. <laughs> So we've already had some information about trying to bring to Parliament. I would suggest you do that with the strongest possibility and then put them in the dock and ask them the question. They have the community not at heart. It says in the information this evening that employees of the plant work closely with the community. I have seen none of that evident this evening, and I have seen none of that evident over the years. You may have a, a committee that sits on the council, but in reality, it's only paying lip service, I would suggest, to what the community wants. So the community have to empower. So use your politicians to empower you to ensure you can bring this to the parliament. simply the petition, or do you think it should be broader than that? And what measures can you apply to require the two empty chairs to be filled? But it, it's quite obvious there's cross-party support here. And we have representation from a number of political parties. So I think it's up to us in Mid Scotland and Fife, along with the constituency members, to put as much pressure as we possibly can on the individuals from these businesses to look after the community. So I would suggest that we need to come together on behalf of the community and move forward, but also take on board all the constituency because you're living with it, you're breathing it, you're, you're, you're part of this process. So, like, like you said, excellent work for the not being here tonight. Right? Yeah. Most of the people that came here tonight were going to see that over here. So you can ask them questions. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, we can't give you unless you stand up. Please. Most more people in their homes have been spent five years. I got an extension. I think it's going to be 32 years or something. Well, I didn't think it should get another extension because I think it's past the sale by date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name's Lady and I'm My name's Lady Bay and I'm a resident of Caribbean Beach. And I'm hopeless at remembering time scales, but there was a night where I woke up in the middle of the night and the walls in my house were vibrating. And it sounded like there was a jet engine trying to land on the top. Yes. Immediately I phoned the police who informed me that they had a lot of phone calls. But it turned out it was just most more in and everything. My point here is I've heard about carcinogenics, people's illness, the wildlife, 
Ma koin es am scared in my own bed in my own home at night. Now you should feel safe in your own bed in your own home. But I'm telling you, I thought my walls were coming down that night. It was so bad. And to live scared in their house, it's just unbelievable. Yes. <laughs>
more resources around that because it's for our organisation to determine how we prioritise and on the enforcement uh, and full investigation. I've told you, you know, we've got a group of people together in order to focus that and make it thorough and formal. Uh, so um, I, I did mention it's difficult for us to de deploy equipment in response to an unplanned event. And that relates to you know other authorities in the company. That there's a broad basket of people involved in it as well as us. Now, in terms of the regulations that apply to this, um, to the two companies, um, it, it's the most rigorous um, European directive yeah. that can be applied, yeah. and it applies to all emissions to air all releases and, uh, to atmosphere, discharges to water, re, you know, all of, it, it's, it's going to be Industrial Emissions Directive, uh, and it's IED. it's IED, mm -hmm. and it is the toughest regime. So the onus, <coughs> when, if, you're, if you're operating an activity that actually qualifies for IED regulation, the onus is on the operator to demonstrate compliance and for the regulator to come in and audit and check that they're complying and to take action. And so, you know, on the broader kind of issue around impacts off-site, that's a question of authorities um, collaborating and making sure that any gaps are flagged, uh, um, you know, identified and flagged up um, and responding accordingly. Because, you know, what I don't want to do is pretend that, I mean, so CEPA is responsible for regulating the activities under IED, but the off-site impact have a broader set of uh, authorities involved, and it's, it's through committees and through uh, liaison that we get that, that, that those gaps uh, plugged. Um, so, but we can maybe, and, and sorry, there was a point made earlier by the lady there, um, uh, four rows back, about the impacts and the vibrations. You know, um, you're the kind of person we need to speak to in terms, if you want to. Yeah, but I would, I would the hazard <laughs> that a lot of people aren't even aware who to call or where to get that information. So, okay, I, I appreciate that. This is part of that process. I can give you the pollution hotline. The, the visibility of the information is not as good as it should be. So I went on a hunt today on our website, yep. okay, because our website is quite, you know, involved. Yes. And I can tell you exactly where it is. Yes, please. Okay? Um, so you go to our website, and there are tabs, um, and there's a tab once you get there called regulation, okay? You go on that, and you'll see air, and then you click on that. This is how many clicks you've got to go through. But this is to find the most common, um, I'm trying to get to the, you know, the level of transparency here that you need, but you know, I hear the message and it's not good enough. So I can, I can tell you exactly how to get there for about four clicks. And it's got um, you know, the Moss Moran and the Brayfoot uh, complex. And that includes you know, the regulations that we apply, who we're the joint competent authority with, um, reports that there are, and links to compliance and things like that. So it's quite hard to find. It. So you know, I can tell you exactly where it is uh, after the <coughs> So my name is Michelle Janet and I'm a local manager and I think what you're referring to from years ago, social media is huge now, everybody's talking and I was personally approached to my inbox like crazy um, this morning. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me their experiences, their health issues, their asthma is flared up their kids are suffering, um, their pets are suffering. Um, I got inundated with it. So for the guys at the end, the five council, if the liaison committee that you've not had any um, people approach you or enough to go to them with, I find that unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, because I was inundated after one day. I think the absence here speaks volumes tonight. It just looks like they just didn't care in all honesty, because they've never even bothered turning up. We don't care. This is, we have to live with this. This is our kids. This is our health. The, the <coughs> research that James um, are, are furious, absolutely furious, to think that we are living in an area that could be causing us cancer. That's massive. And that's something that needs to be investigated. And to be honest, I'm, sure, I'm not sure why 
This hasn't been done before. Why is it taken now? Why are you doing Why is the director? Why has this never been done before? Because that flavour has been going on for years, absolutely years. And right now, the, the talk of the gift and the talk of the money going back into in, in the community that we don't know about, that seems so underhanded. And to be honest, it feels like we're getting sold out. Their families and health is getting sold out.